you just can't buy this kind of advertising. I'm telling you right now. This is a, a statement from, of course, uh, Mr. Trump. And he says, I love Elon Musk. I'm constantly talking about electric cars. I'm totally for them. But then whatever the market says, if it's 10% of the market, 12%, 7%, 20%, whatever is okay. So then Barron's goes on to say, rollbacks of EV purchases, tax credits, federal funding for EV charging stations, and emission standards was a, would essentially slow the growth of EVs in the U.S., but that isn't terrible for Tesla. It is the only U.S. EV maker with profit and scale. Tesla sold about 164,000 EVs in the U.S. in the second quarter. Ford Motor was second with about 23,000. Tesla sells far more EVs overseas than any other U.S. automaker. Of course, we know that. But in terms of the U.S. market, whatever is everybody is pretty much in agreement. I've seen a couple of articles going the other way, but pretty much every article that I've seen, regardless of the source, has said that the, that anything that happens with regard to the IRA going away or being modified is going to be in Tesla's advantage. So I don't think that should be a concern of ours right now. Sawyer Merritt says, and this will be exciting news for everybody that's, uh, when we get the 12.5, is that the new 12.5 will not allow you to go, I'm sorry, Tesla's FSD supervised will now, that's the word I missed there, will now allow you to go hands-free when wearing sunglasses. So the next version, the 12.5 version, and I'm beginning to believe maybe they're going to skip 12.4. We'll see what happens, but that's kind of where I'm thinking about right now. Well, this is Randy Kirk. That was all the Tesla news there was today, but man, there's a lot of news with regard to what's happening coming up this week with earnings and with reports that are coming out this week. Big, big week this coming up. So uh, be sure to hit the like and subscribe and notify buttons. Be sure, if you haven't already seen it, to see Larry's bio. I'll put a card up in that later on when we're almost when we're done with this show. I'll put a card up for the Larry's bio. Everybody's loving Larry's bio. It's such an interesting story. And then tomorrow, Brian White has already said he'll be on as usual. And Larry Goldberg will be on tomorrow night and his normal slot. And, you know, we'll be talking a lot about what's coming up on Tuesday, Earnings Day. Well, speaking of Earnings Day... Oh, by the way, you could also join Patreon. That would be helpful. Tuesday is the big earnings day. We've got Alphabet, or Google, or Goog is the new, uh, the new uh, you know, handle. We've got um, uh, Capital, not the new, the old, I'm sorry. Alphabet's the new name. Goog is the, uh, yeah, is the, is the, is the uh, uh, how you look it up on the stock market. Then we've got Capital One also. So those are uh, Google Alphabet will give us, uh, you know, some of the tech information as well as some of the advertising information. We'll be able to see kind of the direction those things are going. Capital One will give us more on the financial side, obviously. We've got General Motors on that day. So that'll be interesting to see what happens with General Motors in the second quarter. We've got Spotify, which uh, tells us a little bit something more about the tech end of, of the world. Of course, UPS. Now that's starting to look at trucking and what trucking tells us, it's the canary in the coal mine um, and tells us about goods being moved. And that's always helpful. And then Visa for some more financial information about how people are spending, uh, whether people are getting a little too crazy about their credit cards, et cetera. And of course, on Tuesday is Tesla. Later in the week, we'll have Chipotle. That'll give us some consumer. Then we got American Airlines, which will give us some of that travel and leisure part. So going to be a very big week this week in terms of earnings. All right, now let's talk about what are the reports coming out this week. And there's a bunch. So on Monday, nada, nothing. Okay, on Tuesday, we get existing home sales. Now, last, now this is annualized, but last month we were at 4.11 million. This is suggesting existing home sales are going to drop down to 3.95 million on an annualized basis. And then, um, and that would not be in keeping with the housing information that we heard last week, which was showing that uh, existing home sales are doing okay. So let's uh, we'll find out what happens. But that's that's interesting. All right, we've got the S and P flash coming in that morning. Also, uh, we've got on the P the the PMI on services last month was fifty five point three, suggesting that's going to be falling to fifty five. This is a trend that I think the Fed is hoping is true. 
uh, the services are starting to get a little softer. That wouldn't be much softer, but it might help the Fed with their decision. And then manufacturing also showing that getting softer. That is not necessarily good news, uh, but from 51.6 to 51.4, I don't argue with any of those numbers in anything that I know. Then on Wednesday, we get new home sales. Now, this one, interestingly, last month was 619. And this month, they're showing 644,000. Uh, so a big jump in new home sales uh, in that month uh, on an annualized basis. So not 100% sure what's happening. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm hearing so much different things going on right now with housing, but we'll know later in the week what we're looking at here. Uh, and that would be June sales. So we're really getting into the heart of you know, the real estate season. So it'll be interesting. What is going on with real estate in June could be really in indicative. Now, we've also got mortgage rates coming down now. Early indications are that it hasn't helped uh, create many more mortgages yet. But, you know, it's usually going to be two or three weeks, especially if they're trending down. People are going to be like, ah, I think I can get a better deal. So we'll see what happens. But we're running out of season, if you will. Well, not that. Usually the season goes all the way through the end of September into October. All right. Thursday, we've got the GDP number. Last month, the last quarter rather was 1.4%. That was the final number after they, you know, they do uh, two adjustments. Well, the final number is 1.4%. This is suggesting that uh, second quarter GDP will be up 1.9. I think that's kind of the Fed number. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are just copying that number. I wouldn't be at all surprised to have it come in uh, at 1% or lower. Um I don't have any absolute knowledge or special ways of coming up with that number. I just feel it in my bones. All right. Then we get initial jobless claims last uh, month, uh, last week, rather. That was up quite a bit at 243, suggesting it'll only come down a bit to 237. Um, yeah, maybe. I, I, I don't have any, I don't have any help on that one. Durable goods orders. Last month, um, positive 0.1%. This month, they're thinking durable goods will be up 0.6%. And we got durable goods minus transportation. Last month was actually down. And this month, they're saying it'll be flat. Um, durable goods, uh, I was uh, visited visiting one of my clients who's a bike shop the other day, still not seeing a lot of orders, still not seeing a lot of people walking in the door. Um, don't have any other information for you other than that one little piece. But uh, I am not sure that durable goods are picking up that much. We'll see. Um, then we got the trade balance, advanced U.S. trade balance in goods. Um, last month that was up. I'm yeah, 99.4. Oh, I'm sorry. I think that is the trade balance. Yeah. So it was at 99.4 negative. Uh, they're not giving us any kind of an estimate this month. Advanced retail inventories was up 0.7% last uh, month. This one is also not giving us any, ex uh, any expectation, any, uh, they did apparently nobody knows or nobody can guess and uh, wholesale inventory is also last month up 0.6 i don't have any reason to have anything to indicate whether these inventories will be going up and down remember inventories are both a uh, part of the expectations and right now we're seeing con confidence lower so that would tend to lower inventories if people think the future is not going to be great uh, lower inventories would also happen if people are not buying as much and you know, wholes wholesalers and retailers have overbought. Um, and uh, 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 so the time that inventories generally go up is when there's optimism and when there's a lot of buying. So, yeah, so if they're going up, that's good news for the economy, not maybe such good news for the Fed in terms of making that decision. Okay, then we got Friday. That's the big day. PCE. Last month was 0.5% was the headline number. This month, they're thinking the headline number will be 0.4%. So right, direction, right directionally. Personal spending last month was only 0.2%, thinking it'll go up to 0.3%. That would not be right, the best directionally. Then we got the PCE index uh, last month at flat. It was zero. Um, this month, thinking it'll go up 0.1%. Now you get into the year over year, last month, 2.6. This month, they're suggesting to be 2.5. The core, last month, 0.1, and this month, 0.1. This is going to be the one everybody is going to care about. 
Then you got the core year over year, 2.6, they think going down to 2.5. Those numbers would be excellent and it would certainly cause people, if they weren't already voting 100%, uh, that, the, uh, that the Fed is going to lower in September, they would increase their bets if, it's, in fact, it comes down to 2.5%. That would be a very good read on the core PCE. Consumer sentiment comes in that afternoon on Friday. I'm sorry, Friday at 10. So we will be able to report that Friday morning. Uh, last month, 66. They're thinking it's going to stay at 66. Oh, this is actually a final reading. So this is not a change reading. This is a final adjustment in the previous reading. And they're thinking there will be no adjustment. All right, let's see. Of course, we've got some news going on right now. I don't know, something happened today. Something about President Biden stepping down. Um, he, uh, Trump says he wants some of his money back from having to spend all these months fighting against Biden and the Biden White House not telling us that he was really not going to be able to make it. Um, so he, he wants money back so that he can spend it against the next nominee. A lot of speculation, suggestion that it's going to be Kamala. Um, that's the news. We'll see what happens there. Um, I honestly, this is not this is this is almost not a political statement. It's a, just an honest question. In the comments below, could you tell me if you know a single thing, one thing that Kamala Harris has ever done? I'm, I'm just being honest. One thing that she's ever done that has been something that would indicate that she is qualified to be president of the United States. One thing that would say to you, boy, that makes, yep, you know what? She did that. That's why I think she would be the, the person to do it. I I I'm, I'm, I study this pretty carefully. I watch it pretty carefully. She's a Californian. She, you know, she was Attorney General Hill in California. She didn't do anything in California that would that I know of, but maybe you do. And and I put it up on X twice now. Not a single person, not a single person has come up with one thing that she's done that would qualify her for this position. All right. Having said all that, let's take a look at where the markets are. What are the markets thinking about this? What has just happened? Oops. And the last I looked, uh, bonds so far um, are down uh, uh, two basis points to 4218. They were, uh, uh, that's that's a pretty good number. That directionally, that would suggest that the, the bond market is thinking that these interest rates are going to be coming down. Let's take a look at the two-year. It's actually up four-tenths of a basis point. So that is, in fact, um, spreading out the option just a little bit there to 29. Yeah, to 29. So we were at 27. Now we're going up again a little bit to 29. And the two-month uh, 5.38, way out there, 100 and, uh, 100 and almost, almost 120 basis points spreading there. So the spread continues to be... Um, not really significantly going in the direction that would bring us back to normal. Let's look at oil. Um, oil up 42 for Texas Intermediate, up 36 for Brent. Uh, split between them, not even three dollars. Um, so all of the things with the Houthis, Houthis, Houthis. I don't know. Anyway, all the Middle East stuff that's been going on over the weekend apparently not really. Uh, making a dent or causing any concerns with the oil market. So Texas Intermediate is still $80.55. Really, even though it's up a little, getting really close to that uh, seven handle. Natural gas at uh, up 0.99%, almost, um, almost up 1% in the pre-market. Gold is up 1150, all time high. Um, you've got 2410. You've got silver, though, staying under 30, up up 0.86 in the pre-market, but still under 30 at 29.55. Copper up 0.35% at 4.25, putting it still in that, it's in the range, really kind of in the middle of the range. The dollar up against the euro, down against the Japanese yen, um, still not seeing anything about uh, the uh Japanese intervention yet. All right, we've got, okay, so now on crypto, it's up 858 to 68,169, getting very close to 70 again. I did read headlines and a little bit of an article suggesting that they're expecting Trump to really be good for crypto. 
uh, all crypto, in, but in particular Bitcoin. And so people are starting to bet in that direction. And that's why it's up. Don't know if that's true. Don't know if it's false. I'm just telling you what the headline said. All right. What about the equities? The Dow, 40,643. That's up 81 or 0.20. The S&P up 1750 or 0.32%, and the NASDAQ up 98 or 0.50. So the NASDAQ up strong. This is the opposite of the rotation that everybody's been talking about. There was a ton of articles still feeling like we're doing the rotation. I don't see the rotation. I don't see the rotation here. I haven't seen the rotation since Wednesday. Um, I don't know why people still think there's a rotation, but we will follow this, as you know, day by day, because I think uh, now this is also not a pullback, so this is a this is definitely a a positive direction here. So the five percent that we've roughly pulled back, that might be all of it. I don't have really a sense of whether we need to correct by ten percent or whether five percent is it. But I called the five percent correction, and so I'll take that win. And I have no prediction on the next next leg down. But I might have a prediction on that by the end of this week, okay, as we see what happens with the PCE. Well, okay, that's all we have right now. I want to remind you, you've got to watch the Larry bio. I mean, if you you guys say you really, really think Larry's, you know, a great guy, fantastic uh, personality to have on the show, wisdom, all that. Well, learning about his history is fascinating as well as an instruct, instructive in terms of understanding some of the ways that Larry thinks. And I think you'll just, I think you'll just find it entertaining. So there's the card. Please go ahead and check out Larry's bio and also join Patreon. If you like the content, if you think we're doing a good job here and you got an extra three bucks a month or five or 10, please join Patreon. That would be a big, big, big help. It's been great talking to you.